Thank you, everyone. Uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, Melissa. Um, so yes, today we will talk to you a little bit about the Reading Wikipedia in the Classroom program, uh, especially uh, the details around how we build this program in a way that goes from the global level to the local applications, therefore the word local. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself, Elwin? I'm Elwin Woman. I come from Peru. I'm from a Quechua community, and my main goal is always to bring Wikimedia projects to the Andes, which I think it's important uh, to localize all the resources that the Wikimedia project has to local uh, communities. And I'm Melissa. Uh, I'm part of the education team at the Wikimedia Foundation, and I was part of designing the program and um, and helping other people uh, implement it. Uh, our colleague Olga is unfortunately not with us today. She was uh, one of the unfortunate victims of the <laughs> lack of visa processing for uh, Bolivia, but uh, she is leading the Wikimedians of Bolivia user group, and she has been involved in the Reading Wikipedia in the Classroom program since its inception, since the pilot and she's also uh, our Wikimedian of the Year. So in this presentation, uh, uh, we will just briefly go through what is the program and how it has scaled globally uh, in the past three years uh, and what does it look like in the local level in the examples of Peru and Bolivia. And we'll leave some spaces for questions. Um, so what is the Reading Wikipedia in the Classroom program? I think some of you are already familiar with it, um, but it's basically an attempt to design a program that can help teachers take advantage of Wikipedia as a pedagogical tool by aligning it to the media and information literacy framework proposed by UNESCO. So through this program, we present Wikipedia uh, to the teachers and we present them how Wikipedia can help them to access information, evaluate the information they access, and then participate in the creation of this information. It's a program that is designed as a professional development uh, training for teachers uh, who are already in, in the classrooms and that presents them with uh, practical knowledge and resources that they can later integrate in their own practice. Uh, we created this program through a process, a collaborative process with uh, um, trainers from three user groups, in uh, three affiliates uh, in Bolivia, the Philippines, and Morocco back in 2020. Uh, originally, we started thinking about this program in 2019. We envisioned it as a face-to-face -face experience, you know, in-person training, but the pandemic made us change our plans radically. Um, we also built this program with adaptation in mind. Uh, we know that in education there isn't a one-size-fits-all kind of solution and you know the presentations throughout this conference make that very very clear. The multitude of solutions and, and initiatives that come from the Wikimedia and Education Network uh, show, show that, show the importance of adaptability, of responding to the context and so we when we were designing this we were very very mindful of that. Um, and finally, we try to ground this uh, on open pedagogy principles. Collaboration being one of them, but also uh, designing for the real world. You know, so giving teachers uh, assignments, reflection questions, um, homework, uh, practice that actually relates to the topics that they are interested in and that they will later use in their, in their classroom. Um, and the way that, uh, as I mentioned, uh, we, we started with a pilot experience in three countries. Uh, we reached out to teachers in these three countries uh, through a needs assessment. We launched a survey. We started by uh, inquiring, you know, what do teachers know about Wikipedia in the first place? Uh, what do they know about media and information literacy, which was the framework where we grounded the program? Um, and um, what did they care about in a training program? So based on that, uh, we al aligned the curriculum, we created it, we launched the pilot, and then uh, we did an evaluation experience. Um, you can see the report and all of the resources uh, available on Wikimedia Commons. 
Um, but after the pilot, the question was, well, how do we grow this experience? You know, we learned that teachers, after going through this program, uh, responded more positively about Wikipedia. They responded more positively about uh, the skills that they felt that they had for evaluating information, for, for, for using and participating in Wikipedia. Um, and so the way that, they, that we did uh, this scaling was through a training of trainers program. So instead of going directly to the teachers, we decided to instead uh, make an open call for Wikimedians uh, who wanted to implement this program in their countries. And uh, in the past three years, uh, we have been able to train and certify 73 Wikimedians from 42 countries um, and uh, who are currently organizing uh, to also like take the program to the next level. But in these three years, we have seen uh, many different things happen. Um, for starters, we have reached thousands of teachers uh, through uh, uh, outreach campaigns that these trainers have done, through the needs assessment as well. And out of these thousands of teachers, uh, a few hundred have actually completed the program. Um, a few hundred more have uh, engaged in the program as participants, but maybe they didn't complete it. Um, and we have seen this from more than 10 implementations led by, by certified trainers, by, by Wikimedians themselves, uh, who have engaged in very important partnerships as well uh, with local UNESCO offices, with um, districts, uh, uh, education districts, instant, local instances of the ministries of education, and also teacher networks. Um, and these trainers themselves have also uh, translated and localized the, the resources so that they can better respond to, to their context. Uh, we have now these um, open educational resources translated in more than 10 languages uh, um, in the shape of you know, mod complete modules of the program, but also quick booklets and um, training slides and even more uh, educational resources like videos and uh, um, infographs and, uh, and resources that you can print and bring to the classroom. Um, so this is kind of what it looks like globally, uh, but to give you a little bit more of a picture of how does, it, how does the program work in the ground and what it takes to bring this uh, and adapt it and implement it to, to, to a local context, I'm going to pass the mic to Elwin, who's going to share the experience from Peru. Yes. Um. Exactly. How many uh, of you have been in Peru? Raise your, your hands. <laughs> okay. How, how many of you have been in Peru? Peru, South America. Okay. Next. And how many of you have speak or talk with Quechua people? Uh, with no, Quechua people. Quechua or in Spanish? In English with a Quechua. <laughs> Okay, now we are talking, right? <laughs> That's a good. Um, yes, so for giving a context about this uh, program, so the implementation of reading Wikipedia in the classroom in Peru, it was uh, such a grateful journey and also a challenging journey because probably most of you know that there, was, uh, there were a lot of uh, protests and demonstrations in Peru the last months. So I think also show to the world that the Quechua's and Aymara's and all minoritized communities are in danger there. So how run the program, or how we plan the program, how, how to run the plan of the program. Uh, well, we started in January, basically, and then uh, we started planning it and more or less figuring out how we can plan it, because the situation was really hard, but when we planned that, we hoped that uh, it would stop somehow the, the demonstrations, the protests, and so on, or th there will be some solutions. But it didn't, it didn't work well, so until nowadays there are some protests and demonstrations, they are lower, but they are still. And what we did was first um, to, after the planning, we started to, to, we asked to the teachers whether we can implement it in person. And they said, yeah, we can do it. And some of the teachers, they really went to the, um, through all this, um, let's say, adventure because they, we prepared the program in a specific place, which is Puno, the capital of the region in Peru. Uh, one of the regions, and uh, they came from different districts, but the protests and demonstrations, they were uh, basically stopping the transport, the means of transport, so there were no way to communicate one town with, it, with other towns, so it was really hard. And then in March, we ran this implementation, and we realized that these problems were affecting our program, so we switched into the 
hybrid mode. So where we uh, basically did the uh, in presence with few teachers, but then we also uh, leveled up to online online mode. And so we, we ran the first online session, the on-site training, and we did some project monitoring to see whether the program can somehow be really, really moved to an online course. Then afterwards, in April and May, we did some assessment there and see about the, we uh, track the, the needs assessment results and say, okay, what is going with the teachers? Are they interested in the program or are they following the program? How they are doing this, all the, the, the course and the program? And now in May and June, we are still running the program because some of the teachers were uh, so motivated to do it and they said, yeah, I couldn't register or I couldn't uh, attend the first uh, cohort or the second cohort, but we would like to, to attend in the next uh, cohort. So when are you opening it, a new one or how we can enroll or follow the course? So. And this is how we plan it from January to June. So you will, you will hear from, from our project soon also in, in DIF and Wikimedia around some posts. And yeah, how it, it's globally or how we can look like, like Peru in, in the context here. Okay, so in Peru uh, we focused on a specific region, which is called Puno. And then we decided to run this, the program, the implementation of the program, not the planning, the implementation between March and June. And the target was, were secondary school teachers. And we had reached uh, more than 500 teachers. And we uh, had a registration of 126 teachers. Active participants are 40 teachers. And the program is online, on-site, and hybrid as well. So, so far, what we got in a big picture is uh, more than 500 teachers reach out to communicate and they are planning to more or less uh, to spread the word about the program. And also, there are, uh, we are planning for this year to complete this uh, more than 50 uh, certified teachers. Also, uh, we have already two certified trainers that can run the program in, in Peru. And we have some implementations of the program already, as I mentioned, and we are also focusing on different languages, not only Spanish or not only Quechua, but also Aymara and other languages around Peru. So I think this is important because uh, there are some communities minoritized and they, are not, um, they, they have not many ways to uh, show their presence, not only on the education level or in the um, uh, social democracy or in the web or in any kind of aspect, so we, because we use the, our mother tongues only in informal context. So I think it's important to give them the resources, the structure, and all these um, facilities for, for them. Well, uh, what we uh, are aiming in, in Peru is basically a gender balance, because from the results we saw that, that there is a still not um, gender balance between the participants, for example, and there are only 30% participation of women and 70% the rest. And also we look for a quality education in this case, because I think it's important that minority communities, they also have access to a high quality education because some of them cannot even finish the secondary school. So it's, we have to show them that there are possibilities, there are materials, there are resources. So we should bring these resources to them and diversity because not only in Spanish, not only for Spanish speaking uh, persons, but for the Quechua community, Aymara community as well. And of course with this, we are looking for uh, inclusion as well. And how we are looking this for um, towards Wikimedia 2030, well, we are seeking to drive and facilitate innovation that can improve the user experience regards to Wikimedia projects and so on, and ensure equity uh, in decision making, skills and leadership development, and innovative free knowledge. So all these projects come together and we are not only, uh, for instance, just focusing on reading Wikipedia in the classroom, but we are also leveraging to, uh, for example, Wikisource, Wikidata, and so on. So, and as I told at the beginning of my talk, well, uh, there was a story about uh, running the program in, in the region of Puno, and this is the picture. and. As you can see, the, the, the software or the material, the, the structure is not the, the best, but still we decided to run it. And I think this is important because even some teachers couldn't attend directly. They made it, made it impossible 
to attend and come to the, to the courses. And they are actively asking when you will have the next version, when you have a, another course, when you, is, is this, for example, when I was, uh, we are running this third uh, cohort with hybrid mode, they are asking, is this the same course or is it a next version, like a, a second level of the course? So they are looking for this kind of um, uh, resources and courses. So I hope we can uh, do that as well this year. And with this, uh, I change the mic with Melissa. Oh, I can use this. <laughs> Gracias. Thank you, Elwin. Um, I forgot to mention, Elwin actually uh, is a certified trainer who participated in the, graduated from the second cohort of training of trainers, and then he became an uh, assistant facilitator for the third cohort. So, uh, yeah, I'm super honored to, to share the stage with him. Um, and uh, uh, so Olga couldn't make it here, but uh, I'm, I'm just going to briefly share uh, some of the work that Wikimedians of Bolivia has been have been doing has been doing. Um, but like I mentioned, uh, Wikimedians of Bolivia participated in the pilot edition of this program, so they helped build the curriculum, uh, uh, survey the teachers, conducted interviews, uh, and then they continued implementing different editions of, of the program uh, since 2021. Um, this is the, their plan of implementation for 2023. As you can see, it's, it goes from January through December, because as a user group, they have already incorporated the this program as part of their education programs uh, that they offer. They have, they have many, not only reading Wikipedia. Um, and um, in Bolivia, they have been focusing also on going beyond the, the, the capital. Uh, the first experience with the pilot, it was completely virtual because of COVID in 2020. But since then, uh, they have made it a point to actually transform the program into also three models, like Elwin mentioned, online, in-person, and hybrid. And they have been going to uh, municipalities in more rural areas of Bolivia, where even access to internet and digital tools is something, no, a novelty for teachers and where they see that teachers are struggling uh, to incorporate these tools uh, into their classroom practice, but they are, you know, forced to do it uh, since, since COVID. Um, so they have reached uh, over a thousand teachers uh, in, these, uh, in these few years and they have also expanded to adapt the program to work more directly with, with the students. Um, these are some of the yeah, some of the, the, the big data pictures. Um, they have also uh, made an effort to translate the resources into like like Elwin was saying in more than in languages beyond Spanish. Uh, uh, so Quechua, Aymara, and Guarani. They actually were uh, received were finalists to the Open Education uh, Open OE Global Awards last year uh, because of this effort. Um, and um, they have uh, three certified trainers in the country and they are also working on a leadership development model with the teachers who participate in the program so that they, then in the next implementation these teachers become mentors to the, to the teachers who are participating for the first time. Um, their focus and the impact that they're looking for is uh, on geographic diversity. Uh, Bolivia is a small country, but the uh, gaps in access to, the, the disparities in access to technology are very, very big. Um, they also are looking into community building. They're really emphasizing in using the program as a way to bring teachers uh, to be part of Wikimedians of Bolivia. So they are opening up the program and uh, enabling enabling spaces to do workshops with the teachers, uh, to invite the teachers to participate in campaigns, so to really build that network and, and engage them beyond the, the ending of the program. And uh, like Elwin mentioned also, uh, on equity, diversity, both in terms of, of gender, uh, in terms of, of uh, subjects that the teachers um, teach. They have teachers from many, many, uh, um, teaching many, many courses. And, um, and they are looking to facilitate innovation as well. Um, I really wish that Olga was here to tell you a little bit more about uh, their work, but I do have an audio, <laughs> an audio message from her. So I'm just going to play it uh, just really quickly. It's one minute. It's going to be in Spanish, but you're going to hear her beautiful voice and accent. And then I will translate uh, her uh, in, in English. Uh, let me see if it works. Lo que el impacto que estamos buscando es justamente que 
digamos que hemos hecho como varias experiencias y queremos seguir experimentando igual la mejor manera de apoyar a los profes con las necesidades que tienen en la transición hacia la digitalización de muchos de muchos espacios, entonces la foto que está ahí es de los estudiantes del municipio de Coroico, un municipio turístico que está a como tres horas de La Paz, eh, que, pero que a pesar de su cercanía con la ciudad, eh, no, bueno, y como en general pasa en Bolivia, el acceso a internet igual sigue siendo como un obstáculo, pero que nos ha ayudado mucho a discutir temas con ellos generales, como cómo identificar fake news, eh, cuál, debe, cuál podría ser su posición crítica con respecto a las redes. Cre cre queremos seguir experimentando así. En este caso hemos trabajado directamente con los estudiantes bajo un acuerdo con la dirección del colegio. Y también ahora estamos trabajando, eh, bueno, Erlan está trabajando específicamente en la ciudad de Santa Cruz, por eso he marcado dos puntitos en, en el mapita de Bolivia, eh, con los estudiantes de la normal de profesores, de manera que ya de la normal los, los, los jóvenes que van a ser profesores salgan con, esta, con estas inquietudes eh, despiertas y con ganas de hacer más proyectos con nosotros. Y en general lo que estamos tratando es proponerlas a los, a los docentes que vean en qué, otros, en qué otros aspectos creen que podemos crear sinergias para ir evolucionando el programa hacia las necesidades que tiene cada municipio y de acuerdo a su nivel de familiarización con internet. Yo sé que es harto lo que te estoy diciendo, pero es como la línea general que nos gustaría compartir que más allá de ir con el programa y decir, bueno, este es el programa y así se hace, también hay como mucho de aprender lo que ellos necesitan y, y ver, ver de implementarlo en la medida en que, en que es coincidente con nuestra línea de trabajo y que creemos que esa puede ser una manera interesante de trabajar con, para, para, para no ser invasivos también, porque también estamos trabajando con personas que no, no siempre son culturalmente muy similares a nosotros. Eh, cada, cada contexto es bastante diferente, entonces tratamos de adecuarnos a eso y más bien compartir y el aprendizaje se, se, se hace como mucho más rico en eso. Les mando... Cool. So... <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Um, so that was Olga, uh, and just in a nutshell, uh, what she was trying to express and what she wanted to communicate through this picture was that they, they really are trying to work, not only coming to the communities with the program, giving it to the teachers and then moving on, but they're really trying to engage with the teachers, build, adapt, uh, shape the program in a way that is meaningful for them because they recognize that when they go into these municipalities, into these rural areas, they're going in contexts that are very different from their own, even if they are from the same country. So they are looking for, a, for a, to, uh, the implementation of this program as a way of learning from the teachers as well, uh, learning what is interesting for them, so that the future programs that they design uh, can have more synergy with, with the needs of this local education context. Uh, they have had the opportunities to, the opportunity recently to work directly with uh, students, as you can see in the picture of this municipality, thanks to a partnership with the municipality, um, and they are looking to, to, to do more. Um, so, yeah, I think, yeah, with that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. This is wonderful. Congratulations, really. I, I'm very impressed that you're able to translate the content into all these languages. I know the content that exists is very limited. But I'm curious, how was the content selected to start? Yeah, so for, uh, for starters, I can, I, can, I can talk about that start and then Elwin, you can talk about the contextualization, the translation. Um, but yes, like I, like I said, we had a team. So it was the education team at the foundation, but also the coordinators from these three affiliates. And we did first a really, really rough kind of um, skeleton of everything that we thought that teachers would need to know about Wikipedia, should, should, should know about Wikipedia in order to really appreciate it, in order to really understand it. After that, we conducted a needs assessment, and with that needs assessment, we validated the, basically the curriculum. We weeded out some content that was maybe too, too much. Oops. Yeah, oh, yeah, so we, we um, started, um, yeah, uh, how do you say, curating the, the content. Um, then we started building the, the actual content, the actual uh, content of the modules based on what already exists about Wikipedia. You know, there's 
books and books and books about what it is, how it works, and uh, we connected it and grounded it really on this uh, media and information literacy framework. So uh, if you see, if you go on Commons, uh, I, I can, I will share, when we share these slides, I will include the link. Uh, you can look through the modules and see like it is a structure in three different, um, yeah, three different topics, you know, for access, for evaluation, and then for creation. Uh, because the program is called Reading Wikipedia, we mostly focus on these first two aspects, on access and evaluation. And on creation, we kind of like gave a little taste of what it, what it was about, but we mostly focus on, uh, in this third module, on presenting what the Wikimedia community does. So the teachers would know, oh, well, they will know how to edit through the module, but they will know that there is a user group in Bolivia that works on these campaigns and that there are, uh, you know, campaigns around art and feminism, how the Wikimedia community organizes and how they can be part of that and do just little, you know, micro, micro contributions. Yeah. Yes, and regarding, for example, uh, to Peru, what we more or less did was to focus on a specific aspect. For example, what is the, the, the context of Wikipedia for the region, in this case, for Puno? So it was hard to, for example, sometimes find examples that were described in the, in the teacher's guide. Then how you could choose an example that is proper for this specific region. So if we move to another region, like a capital city, like Lima, we could need to uh, also localize the, the content. Also for, the, um, for example, it's a Quechua region, so, but not only Quechua because there is also Aymaras there. So you have, to be this, uh, you have to take in account that both contexts or both regions are more or less represented uh, in the examples, in the activities, and play with this all the time. And for this, um, we, we were uh, four persons in a team and working on this uh, from a social, so, social aspect and yeah, so basically that's what we, we did on, on the program. Yeah, and with every language it's been different uh, uh, because even, you know, we, we created the original guides in English. So we talked about, you know, the, the rules that, uh, not rules, the guidelines that English Wikipedia has. Uh, like Elwin said, we use some examples uh, that were kind of like global. But then when they got adapted to uh, Spanish Wikipedia, for example, some guidelines might be different. The name of some spaces in Wikipedia itself are different. And we, of course, had to, you know, think about the examples and, and the context. Um, so yeah, that's, and it, it's not, it's not uh, done, you know, it's not like Wikipedia, it's not done, it's not ready, and that's why they are, you know, open educational resources and everybody is free to just grab them, transform them, and, and you know, turn them into something that is meaningful for, for their context. Thank you for the question. Maybe I can uh, end it with a couple of uh, um, phrases. I think uh, we have diversity here, and I would like that you could learn one word in Quechua at least. So <laughs> we could say, see you soon, which is Tupananchiskama. Uh, it's a little bit a long word, but it's Tupananchiskama. <laughs> That's right. So I say, see you until next time. So Tupananchiskama. Tupananchiskama. Thank you. <laughs>